Welcome back, you Ultra Boyos. You're here with Dr. Goldberg, and we're going to be talking about the God Pill. Yes, indeed. Now, I'm not sure why Americans have to turn every concept into a pharmaceutical product, but I suppose you could argue we're all addicted at some level. What I'm going to do is present my opinion, my thought process when it comes to this question. I'm not making presuppositions or insisting that you take a particular path. I'm not trying to cast doubt into your mind. Just show the audience essentially how I am uh, wrangling with this dynamic, if you will. So I was raised in a fairly devout religious household, mixed religious heritage, I should say, about as close to messianic hairbearism as you can get without officially proclaiming it. And as a young child, I was fairly confident of my belief that, you know, so-and-so happens, as long as you're a good person, as long as you accept God into your life, you're good to go. But there was an element, ever since I can remember, of substantial skepticism. And I was never truly content and satisfied with how, whether it was pastors or parents or relatives, would try to explain stuff. So it's a good example. And most of my problems, of course, came from the Torah, the Old Testament. Because in that instance, you have Yahweh, which comes off as an extraordinarily capricious, sadistic, moody, you know, not exactly a loving universal entity. In fact, it's difficult to claim that Yahweh and the God of the New Testament are one and the same. That is very much a, a bridge too far for myself, or at least logically speaking, and we'll go more into that in just a bit. But for instance, when they, there's a passage that says, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart against them. I'm thinking, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't he want his people to be free? It's like, no, I'm going to put more plagues on you guys to punish you. So it's like, there are probably Egyptians that had no role in the government, just like peasants. And they're being afflicted by the plagues, by the death of the firstborn. I'm sure some of the plagues affected the uh, Hebrews, Israelites as well. Just to prove a point, well, why couldn't you just make it simpler? So that's an example where it didn't quite add up, and the explanations I would get just seemed to be one of those, you take this and go away and don't ask me any more questions because it's too complicated type of thing. Another crucial question I had related to the relative status of those who are not Israelites or Hebrews under this older covenant. So while they do talk about people who help them conquer a specific city and those are considered virtuous and righteous, it does seem like Yahweh is focused on one ethnic group. And, you know, what, did everyone else get tossed in the hellfire? If you weren't part of this, where do you end up once you die? And that's never properly spelled out, or at least I've not heard it being done so. And more recently, I was listening to this audiobook, The Evolution of God, and granted, it is highly imperfect, but he did highlight some of the things that I had stumbled across just trying to rationalize what I read in the Old Testament when I was younger, where he's saying, if you take the example of King Ahab, the recount of the guy's reign, what he did, was that truly God's perspective, or is that the interpretation of someone speaking from a specific political point of view? Because you had Solomon, right, with all the wives, and they say, and he was being swayed to their religions. Well, maybe he was just paying tribute. Maybe Solomon governing a re relatively small and meaningless kingdom in the grand scheme of things. He thought, I don't want to be steamrolled, so I'm going to build a trade and uh, alliances, marry princesses from other parts, so that I'm less likely to be attacked. With Ahab, he's married to Jezebel, right? Our wonderful, that wonderful magazine. She's believed to have come from Sidon, or Sidon, uh, modern-day Lebanon, which, of course, at the time was Phoenicia. And the Phoenicians were associated with the Temple of Baal. In fact, they would set up shop and sell merchandise in the temples. Well, there were some factions in Israeli society, if you want to call it that, who did not believe there should be an association with the Phoenicians, but rather they should be aligned with the Assyrians, which were the northern, very powerful empire. 
what happened is that the guy who succeeds Ahab, I believe is Jehu, he went at, went to town just slaughtering the Phoenicians, destroying the temples of Baal. The question is, can we say that Ahab genuinely was a wicked king who was against God, or is it this person's perspective that Ahab was kind of embracing more of a globalist viewpoint versus the genuine, you know, patriotic Israelis or whatever you want to call them, although they too wanted to stand with the Assyrians. So there's going to be a trade-off there. When you look at it from that light, it's like, okay, maybe when you hear that a king is evil, maybe that's because the author didn't like him for some reason. Think about it. If you were right now writing a religious textbook and you're a right-winger in the United States, you might say that the reason that we got Biden is because we're this wicked, sinful country. But it's not like we would be less wicked just because Trump got reelected, hypothetically. In the same way, in these kingdom of Israel, when they say God delivered them into the hands of their enemies, are you saying they were all wicked, therefore they all deserved the slavery or subjugation? Or was it that this king just happened to lose a battle or made you know, poor choices and alliances? So that's when you see more of the human rationalization. It's always struck me the Old Testament seems to be someone explaining or trying to justify why things happened in a post facto sense, right? Um, so that's my view more of the Old Testament. Now we can move on to the next subject. When it comes to what is probably you could describe as modern Christianity, the message is certainly more compelling to large amounts of people. Obviously, universalism, you know, accept Jesus into your heart and be saved and you'll live in paradise. Now, and I know this is kind of an edgy atheist take, so forgive me in advance, but it was Dawkins that said, so let me get this straight, God had to send his son, who is also himself, to die on the cross to save people from sins, but they still have to spend their life living a certain way and worshiping him and accepting him. Otherwise, they'll still be thrown into hell. That's probably too simplistic, and I will grant you, there is some verse that says, like, the natural mind or the rational mind of man cannot comprehend God. So that's where you get the God works in mysterious ways. We can't understand it. And yet there are a lot of people that claim they do, and they'll just start, make, oh, this is because of that. This is because of this. You're seeing it now with the dude's, talking about we're all in the end times because of Biden. Well, maybe we are, or it could just be any other in the long line of corrupt leaders who have uh, done bad things and been seen as a harbinger of something worse. So it is a little bit complicated, right? I don't think there's anything harmful, certainly as far as the Christian message is concerned. Now there are going to be those that say, the elites who are living these hedonistic lifestyles, making lots of money, having sex, basically living to the fullest, most uh, base instincts of what we are, what you know, at least scientists claim that we happen to be, while they're telling the bulk of humanity, whether you're Christian or Muslim, you know, be a good guy, donate to the poor, be moral, pay your taxes, and then when you pass on, you'll go to this wonderland and you'll be rewarded. And it's like, well, what if you spent your whole life doing that? And then you end up just being a freaking uh, fertilizer for the ground. Now, granted, at that point, it's not going to matter because I don't think you would even remember all the stuff you got to do. But I see where the skepticism and the cynicism comes in. With all that being said, I have had this happen on multiple occasions. So as someone who doesn't attend a house of worship consistently, I... You know, once in a while, I'll be, okay, I get up on time on Sunday, I'm going to go. And I was dealing with something at the time. That message would appear to speak directly to me. It was as though someone meant for me to be there at the time. And, of course, you go, oh, it's just coincidence, it's nonsense. Well, this has happened in different states. It's happened different denominations, that sort of thing. You could still push back and claim, well, it's the universal message. They're always going through the Bible. So the chances are, you know, you're just going to find some tidbit that you, you believe is, you know, divinely planned or whatnot. I get it, right? I have a lot of skepticism myself. At the same time, you can spend your whole life being wrapped up in the skepticism. 
and you can run the risk if you ask too many questions you never have answers and it can lead to you being depressed and you'd be like a Christopher Hitchens who was the brilliant atheist who also smoked and drank himself to death at, uh, prematurely which is I think very sad so I can't say with certainty that I know the Abrahamic conception is correct I have a lot of skepticism as I noted about the Old Testament and whether that's the same God whether it aligns properly I would say I do believe in a higher power I'm still trying to figure out how much I can accept the most common conception but I'm always interested in you know sources or whatever that can be inspirational in that regard uh, I did recently or fairly recently went to an Orthodox Church but more of the liberal branch according to the Russians it was okay uh, I wasn't really floored with it to any degree there's another one locally I do want to try Catholic churches I've gone to a couple I just I didn't take the liturgy very seriously but you know, I'm sure it's not all bad been to a few different Protestant ones I've never tried the Baha'i I've never been to a mosque although I have a copy of the Quran I've read it um, Eastern religions they always strike me as being more like philosophies many of the lessons in Buddhism of course are similar to Christianity much like in Hinduism the parables and the moral codes have a lot of alignment with what let's say Jesus taught so I believe in studying all different religions I don't think you should necessarily restrict yourself to just one you know whether you believe in something or not you can still learn from others uh, but I'm always looking for you know ideas or sources so I'd ask you guys what do you think what do you believe and has there been anything that really impacted you or something you read something you saw that was really motivating because I'd be uh, definitely uh, motivated to check it out